Hi, my name is Jonathan Licorice. I'm the head distiller at Iron Root Republic Distilling, and uh, today I'm going to present to you uh, one of my favorite whiskeys. Last time we did this, uh, all the bourbon producers took a lot of heat online because we all were drinking scotch. <laughs> Newsflash today, this one is not going to be scotch. This one uh, provided a lot of inspiration for us for what we produce. A lot of the flavor profiles are similar, uh, some of the production methodology is a little bit similar, but this in general is uh, kind of where we aim for some of our, our uh, quality of our product. So that was very high praise for this to be inspiration for what you guys are doing mm -hmm. because you're winning awards left and right. You won awards? Yeah, for best ginger. <laughs> that, I'll take that. It's a low, yeah. it's a low bar. World's best ginger. It's a very low bar. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any idea what this is? No, no. I was trying to guess from the shape, but no, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I got yeah. nothing. All right, what do we got? Uh, uh, oh, 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 nice. Stag. Going for the Stag Junior. Yeah, yeah. Hot dang. This is a wall of flavor, if I remember correctly. Okay. It is. And yeah. I wanted to bring something that you can still find on the shelf occasionally, but... Uh, <laughs> It's becoming more and more of that kind yeah. of unicorn. Oh, oh, there it is, okay. Right. Beauty before age. Well, that's not, oh, but did you see though? Oh, jeez, yeah, what's buddy? going on here? <laughs> Look, why couldn't, why couldn't Robert be here? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't win best ginger. That's, that's true, right. that's yeah. true, yeah, yeah. We had a vote. <laughs> we had a vote at the distillery. Yeah. <laughs> and your mom was the judge. Yeah. How brutal would that be? Oh, yeah. Best Sorry. ginger, worst ginger. <laughs> <laughs> right, Tell so. us what you get in Stag Junior. Uh, one of the things I love about this guy, mm. it's basically the epitome of bourbon to me. So it's going to have all those big brown sugars, the caramel, the vanillas. It does all the cherry notes, dark cherry notes very well. So this is kind of, for me, more of a the, the standard for bourbon flavor out of Kentucky. It's like bourbon cranked to 11. Oh yeah. And the mm. complexity, all of the things, like the spectrum of flavors that you're gonna find in bourbon, this does a lot of presentation of those notes. Whenever I was first getting into whiskey, this was too much for me. I couldn't wrap my head around it. It's like, oh, I, I'm getting my ass kicked around here. It's taking you out behind the woodshed, yeah, just slapping you around. Getting tossed around the room. Some people like that. Yeah, I'm getting some spankings. <laughs> what do you get on the nose? In particular on Stag, I tend to get more of uh, something in the apple realm. So it's, you, mm -hmm. on some of the batches, it's more of apple cider. Some mm -hmm. of it's more apple pie-ish. But I do like the apple note that I tend to pick up at the yeah, Stag Junior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, A cinnamon apple pie. Mm -hmm. Freshly cooked, that breadiness is in there. Yeah, so good. Let's get in there. Yeah, that'll... <laughs> You almost feel like you should be able to chew it. Yeah, you There's so much flavor packed in That's the much. best whiskey. Yeah. yeah. Chewing whiskey. 63.95%, 127.9%. Perfect. Yeah. When you take a sip of it and you immediately feel the need to just run your tongue along your lower lip, mm. you know, for a second. And then they don't filter it either, so I mean, they leave it all in there. Mm. On the taste, are you getting things different than what you're getting on the nose? Brown sugar is like yeah. dominating. Molasses and brown mm. sugar and almost a burnt caramel. Mm. That's what really jumps to the forefront on the taste for me. Here's the thing. If you're taking your whiskey recommendations based on what the distillers are currently having as their favorite, you need to be strapped in. <laughs> Five point harness. You're right. This, this was an aggressive act recommending this, <laughs> but it's a beautiful whiskey. Okay, so, so you take the glass, I'll take the. No, I was going to take the. It's fine. Why would. You, still more here. It's fine. Motherfucker. <laughs> So the whiskey that I like to drink um, that's not my own um, changes fairly often, but I gotta say for the last couple months, uh, ever since a trip up to Denver, Colorado, has been a certain distillery that's doing some triple distilled Irish style whiskeys. This is a whiskey style that's near and dear to my heart, but it's kind of fun because they do it in a completely different way than we do it. So I heard a few things there. Yeah, and I, I, I'm kind of excited because I think I know who this is. Okay, I heard Colorado. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I heard. Irish style, yes. triple distilled. Yes. I'm titillated. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, let's I think it's somebody who's actually here today for the Bastards Ball. Ooh. Pouring their whiskey. Now, hold on a second. I'm now suddenly very suspicious. Yeah. Because if their favorite is yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do we got? What do we got? All right, guys. We got. Ta da! Yes. 
That's exactly what I was hoping it would yeah. be. Tal We've Lua. Had... This is a really fun release from theirs, uh, from them, and it is a sherry finish. It's called the Old Saints Keep, and it is a sherry finished triple distilled Irish. Sherry. Sure, let's, let's drink it. Ninety proof. How would you describe the nose of this, and then we'll get into the taste? Uh, delicate, um, honey, um, mascarpone. Mm. Um, what is mascarpone? Oh, kind of a dessert cheese. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You say Irish style, and mm -hmm. immediately my head's jumping towards like this short bread vanilla cream. I get cream. that. Yep. But the more of the American honey is showing up than what I typically mm -hmm. get in Irish whiskey. I'm also getting a kind of a hard candy. Like, Definitely that's sweet. The sucker when you go to like a dentist or something and they mm -hmm. give you a little. All right. Or like a div divinity there. or something. Yeah. Like yeah. That. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This episode is sponsored by Crowd Cow. This is very helpful because, quite frankly, when it comes to the meat selection, I love you, honey. I love you so much. You're my favorite in the whole wide world. Whenever my wife goes to the grocery store, she doesn't really have that ability to choose the best cuts of meat. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of chicken, a lot of lean things. Just not, just not great. So, so rather than me go... <laughs> So rather than me go, I would rather have the meat selection handled by professionals who are going to give me better quality meat that's going to be better and healthier for me, and it's going to be better selection than what I can get at a grocery store and even like at most butchers, and it's going to be better for the environment. We're talking about CrowdCow. CrowdCow is basically one of these box services, subscription things. You get things sent to your house. And uh, there's no hormones. Um, the, the, the antibiotics are only the minimal amount needed to make sure the animal's healthy. And you're going to get the grass fed, the pasture raised. They have all the options the pork, the chicken, the beef, seafood, tons of different options. And one of the coolest features is whenever you're getting the meat selected, chosen, what you want sent to your house, you can actually see the farms where it came from. You know exactly, you can trace it all the way back to the source and exactly what they're doing to raise their animals and their livestock, which is great. It's really simple. Just build your box, the things that you want to get, build your schedule, how often you want to get those things, and you're off to the races. So you can click the link in the description below. It's crowdcow.com slash whiskey tribe. New members can get $100 of free meat plus free shipping if you sign up and order with the link in the description below right now. This is a very limited time type of deal, so if you're interested in amazing meat, you kind of need to do it right now. And if you become a member for free, you can save an extra 5% off everything you put into the box. So go do the thing. It's very good, very tasty. I've tried several different things. Uh, the B-roll that you saw, that was actually some bison that Fancy Dan cooked up. Turned out great. Mm, that's subtle. Ooh, and the sherry, like the fruitiness that's there, it's really nice. But it's not overly candied. Mm. It's still definitely whiskey. <laughs> it's, it smells it's definitely sweeter. not. And th they really take a real traditional approach. I mean, if I didn't know this was from, you know, the U.S., I would, I would swear this is an Irish product. There's this one note that, for me, always shows up in American approach to Irish malt. And it's this thing that, for lack of a better term, I'm going to call malt bowls. Like okay. Whoppers, mm. but it's in here. It's that chocolate Whopper yep. note. That is one of the main ingredients of Whoppers, is that malted whiskey. Right. Right. And, right. whiskey. <laughs> Whis <laughs> Thank you yeah. for sharing your favorite whiskey, not your own. You Cheers. bet, guys. Cheers, Cheers. Cheers to you, sir. Good time. Thanks for having me. All right. I brought something that is very dear to me. Usually when we do these things, I'm gonna always lean towards things that are accessible, not some silent distillery or some super rare distillery, only thing that nobody can get their hands on or something that came out 28 years ago and it's never happened again. Anybody should be able to find this. For the category, it's always been underpriced. There's a lot of romantic things about it to me. They have since moved on, but they were one of the last holdouts that was using direct fire. They're one of the few family owned distilleries in this area. For a category with a lot of hype, there's a lot way more expensive, better marketed, more up-to-date label and packaging than these folks, which is why it's always been such a great value and I'm hesitant to talk about it, but there it is. What do we have in here? I'm very curious. Do you have any guesses? As soon as you said direct fire, I was racking my brain for like, hey, do I know this direct Unfortunately, fire? Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure, I don't know if it's even publicly, but I've heard from engineer folks that that's not true anymore. They finally were convinced switch to over. switch, okay. but it's been recent. Okay, Okay. what do we got? Uh, Glenn yeah. Farkless. Right, right on. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they are um, surprisingly affordable mm -hmm. for age statement whiskeys. Yeah, and sherried on top of that. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't think they've changed the label since like 
54, which shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but I hope they don't. And family owned, they're one of the few that haven't been picked up. And it's kind of like Sierra Nevada and beer, like they've gotten this far without it. They have no reason to do it. This they is the bottle they want. that I use as almost kind of like a, an easy out whenever somebody asks me, hey, I need a whiskey for my buddy that's older than he is. Mm. Like, wow, Glenn, Glenn Parkless. Parkless. Yeah, I yeah. kind of always have this rule of thumb, not so much with 12 year olds, but as soon as you get to you know, 18s, 21s, 25s, He's a child we established. Oh, I thought that the studio was falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see you throw it. But yeah, if you get to like an 18, 21, 25, and you're not paying $10 per year, it's right. a deal, right? right. Yeah. All right, let's All pour right. it. Let's get into it. Jared, pour this for us. There's an airline now that does Glenn Farkless really? as their scotch. That's awesome. And I can't remember who it was, but I remember getting onto the plane and going, oh, hell yeah. Glenn Farkless 12? Mm -hmm. Let's do that. I'm getting the most um, surprising note on the nose right now. Maybe it's because I had some other whiskeys about 30 minutes ago, but it's a tobacco note. <laughs> Yeah. What are you getting? It's got the nice, it's got all the kind of plummy and like grape skin stuff that I expect from like an Oloroso. The sulfur is not super strong. I mean, it's 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 not extreme. Right. If, if you want to go Glendronic or something like, there's more ridiculous stuff, yeah. but. I always get the toasted almonds on Olorosos specifically. There's yeah. a, there's like a minerality to it. Yeah. It's another pretty classic, I think, sulfur and, and the fruit obviously, but then a minerality on, specifically on Oloroso for me. All right, I'm going in. Mm. Yeah. It stays mm -hmm. uh, a slight sherry sweetness and that slight sulfur, but it also it's dry. stays dry and it stays grain forward. There's layers, but it's like a slow motion sweet and a fruity finish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's some there's some robust something. It's not, I don't know if it's tobacco or leathery, but there's something at the end there yeah. that's not quite, it's not wine tannin, but it's something with a, with mm -hmm. a nice I think I land on like the oil tightness. leather direction yeah. that you're- This is a lot of like body for 43%. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. This is like citrus on the nose, which I don't think I've ever gotten any zest like on a farkless before. Yeah, I could say like a lemon, like we said this earlier mm -hmm. on something, it was like a lemon cake type note. This is a random question that I think if anybody would know, it'd be you. Is it possible to distill hemp? <laughs> um, I wouldn't think there's a lot of fermentable stuff there, but uh, could be wrong. You might know more about that. But maybe, yeah, I, I don't know. You asked the question. Yeah, yeah, where's the question coming from? You Rex? either know, you Why either you know a lot about this or like you really know nothing. Let's just assume yeah, ignorance just, yeah. with all things I ever say. And then you can get away with a lot more. Let's try to be charitable. You know? Yeah, <laughs> wow, I don't know. You know a lot about this. Yeah. Uh, all right, Jared, thank you for coming. Absolutely, thanks for having me. Guys. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, I chose this whiskey because it really got me started in the craft whiskey world. Met a lot of awesome people through this establishment. I love the whiskey because it's 100% barley. They're doing some fun different toast levels on the barley. One of the first Colorado distilleries. So that's kind of why I chose it. Colorado again. So here's yeah. the thing. This good, is like some a, good distilleries in Colorado. This used to be like a Texas whiskey gathering, and then we started extending <laughs> it to like people we just kind of liked yeah. when we drank the whiskey. Uh, yeah. But every single person who has showed up today was like, uh, if I got to choose from anything I could ever drink in my whole life, right. it's gonna be Talanua. So what the f are you putting in your whiskey? Who are yeah. you paying and how much? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's the uniqueness between the malted and unmalted barley, mm -hmm. the single pot still. Um, mm -hmm. It's a generation that was lost and <laughs> Color back. me suspicious. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what are you drinking yeah, yeah, yeah. when Obviously, it's not your own? It's a malt. Yeah. So malt whiskey. Go for it. Oh, straight ahead. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, I make good stuff. Here, catch. <laughs> Still caught it. All right. All right. Pour this, sir, and then tell us uh, why you like it and what you uh, get from it. And when did you start? Wait, what is this new trend that, like, I get this tiny sorry, little baby sorry. pour and Rex gets, like, three ounces? <laughs> well, I'm not, Jesus. Now, now he has more. Hold on. Yeah. Hold it up. It's perfect. <laughs> you want a little more? <laughs> there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Did you take it? <laughs> so um, when you smell it, yeah, what do you get? What do you get? Right off the bat, a very common nose caramel. One of the toasts they use a really dark barley toast on on some of it, and mm -hmm. I think that really, um, I like that flavor. I like the nose smell. Mm. Yeah, I get like a really ripe berries and cream. What Stranahan's has that I love is one of the things I love about uh, space side scotch, when they're not overly sherried or when they're not overly smoked, that sort of musty barley note mm -hmm. comes straight to the front. Mm -hmm. And I get that in Stranahan's as well, where the, the actual grain note comes forward a little bit. Yeah. And not because it's young or too young or not mm -hmm. aged enough, but just because it's present. In the States, bourbon has been 
you know, the 800 pound gorilla for so many years and malt has just kind of been, you know, off to the side a little bit. Whenever somebody asks, well, what, what's happening in the world of American malt? This is one of the distillers you can point to that's doing nice work. All right, I'm taking a sip of this giant Go. giant portal. <laughs> Mine's bigger. That's <laughs> all that matters. Uh. I get definitely the honey comes out a lot in that, mm -hmm. but it finishes nice. It's not overpowering, overbearing. Sort of a tangy ending to that mm -hmm. finish. I'm actually getting some parallels to some Irish whiskey in here, like that vanilla and that cream note that I was getting on the nose. Do you think that's one of the reasons why you gravitated towards this? Do you just like that combination of a creamy quality and a sweet, fruity quality? This was before Tell Noah that I had started enjoying this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think some of those similarities come from the barley, because mm -hmm. what we're doing on the Irish style, um, recreating that is we're using 100% barley. I definitely think that those correlations with the barley come through a lot. Well, great whiskey. Cheers yeah. to you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks Thank for you, having sir. me, guys. Check out Tell Noah and Strana Hands. All right. So this is my favorite whiskey. The first time I tried it, I fell in love. The first time I tried anything from this distillery, I fell in love. The aromas and the taste that I get on this whiskey remind me of gardening with my mom when I was a kid. It has a lot of nostalgic um, feelings to it when I drink it. Okay, Daniel, I'm gonna need you to be in charge of the feelings portion of this. <laughs> yeah, everyone's constantly wanting to know what my feelings are. <laughs> I think I have a clue whenever you say the word feelings. Is Feelings. <laughs> That's why we brought Emma on to talk about the feelings. Okay, so part. I feel like I'm not going to be surprised at all. So how much Lefroy tin do you want, Daniel? <laughs> yeah, well, I would prefer the cask strength. Is it the cask strength? I don't know. Let's find out. Oh, oh what does it say? It's the tin? It's the tin. Cask ah. strength. <laughs> uh, the kind of thing a distiller would choose. Yes, yes, yes. This is actually a bottle that I brought from home and did not sneak anything from the vault. And wow. I, right. it was a gift. I'm opening it on the show oh, for nice. you guys. Who is it a gift from? You have to um, yell, you magnificent bastard. I think my parents got me this. Mom and dad, you, you magnificent, magnificent bastards. bastards. <laughs> That's one for you guys. <laughs> That's <was> so great. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So on the nose, what do you find? Mm. That briny smoke just first. It reminds me of like when you're digging in the dirt for gardening and you get a little bit deeper and it's like moist soil and it's mm -hmm. yeah. um, damp and it has those smells and you can smell like the vegetation and the earth. Like the mulch, um, which is yeah. what peat is. I mean, it's yeah. just chunks of dried out earth. That are I mean, crap, that's what you buy it. it you can buy peat for your garden at, at Home Depot. A lot of people, yeah. they put their nose in a Lefroy and it's immediately, ooh, that is oh. intense. You have no patience for those people. You consider them inferior and weak. Yeah. She talks about it all the time. Yeah. 58.6% alcohol on wow. this. I will say it doesn't smell like that though. You know the smell of like a button mushroom in a salad bar? She hates mushrooms. I, I get the but no, I get the button mushroom them. smell. Mm. Yeah, I love the only time I ever butt mushrooms you know what, though? in the curry. If you find the mushroom smell, would you fit? Would you hate with Roy forever? It's not there. It's there though. <laughs> it's, but it's not it's there. Not. No, we need. Dude, we don't have any mushrooms in here. This is why we need a shroom guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no. what does it taste like to you? You find the proof on the taste, much uh, more so on mm -hmm. the nose. Mm, wow. It's a warm whiskey hug. And mm -hmm. there's uh, like toasted. Dried apricots, and I don't know how that's Aww. a thing. It's not a thing, but, but dried, dried apricots with a toasty note. I'm still living in just like the salt water, the brine, oh. the iodine. Mm. That's just a big. And that proof is just crawling down through my chest. It's like, a nice, oh, slow, fun. warm whiskey hug. Yeah. I will and tell you this just this today. John and I cleaned the whole still while Emma sat in a chair and watched. I really, you did, yeah. <laughs> It was great. It felt really weird. She though. said something about training. Right. You're the one that said you wanted to physically do all the that's, things. That's true. I did ask. The, um. <laughs> are you trying to avoid being part of the training? Mom and dad are angry. <laughs> <laughs>